According to the American Nurses Association, nearly two-thirds of nurses report that they have been accidentally stuck by a needle while working. These types of injuries hold a high risk of spreading blood-borne pathogens, which are microorganisms such as viruses and bacteria that can cause diseases in people. Due to the risk associated with this exposure, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, published the Occupational Exposure to Bloodborne Pathogen Standard in 1991. According to this standard, an employer must install an exposure control plan, including engineering controls, work practice controls, and guidelines on personal protective equipment, or PPE. Hi everyone, I'm Maria from eTactics, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about work practice controls and the use of personal protective equipment to prevent transmission of bloodborne pathogens. Before we get started, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button below. Also, hit that alert bell icon so that when we post new, helpful content, you get notified. In my last video, I went over some examples of engineering controls. If you want, you can pause this video and refer back to Get Caught Up, but if you don't feel like opening another tab, I completely understand. I'll just mention quickly that engineering controls are devices that aim to stop the hazard at the source before it comes into contact with the worker. But when these safeguards are not available, work practice controls should be used. Work practice controls are behavior-based habits, so it's important to remember that it isn't about what you use, like with engineering controls, but instead how you use them. This has less to do with the devices that are available and more to do with altering mannerisms while performing a task. For instance, if a needle recapping device is not available, a one-handed scoop technique can recap a needle if necessary. This workplace practice involves using the needle itself to pick up a cap and push the cap and sharp together against a hard surface to ensure a tight fit. A few other work practice controls include not bending, shearing, or breaking used needles before disposal. Also make sure to enforce hand washing procedures, restrict eating and drinking in work areas, decontaminate equipment correctly, and dispose of sharps immediately after use. Not using the same syringe or needle for multiple patients or using a contaminated syringe to draw medication is another important workplace practice control. Whenever possible, using single dose vials over multiple dose can help eliminate the likelihood of cross-contamination between patients. For any risk that remains after implementing these primary controls, the use of personal protective equipment, or PPE, is recommended. PPE refers to wearable equipment that reduces exposure to hazardous and infectious materials. This equipment acts as a barrier for your skin, mouth, nose, or eyes whenever there is a possible exposure to infectious material. Remember, this is not your first line of defense. Instead, this protection supplements the engineering control and work practice control safeguards. Some example of PPE include gloves, face masks, protective eyewear, face shields, and protective clothing like disposable gowns or coats. While wearing PPE, it's important to keep your hands away from your face, limit the surfaces you touch, and remove them when leaving a work area. It is recommended to remove gloves first, then goggles, gown, and lastly your mask. Hand sanitizing should always be the final step after having disposed of the used PPE. Each of these control types breaks down into even more specific procedures, cleaning and disinfection of equipment, handling laundry, post-exposure follow-up, and so on all play a role in preventing transmission of bloodborne disease. Complying with the OSHA bloodborne pathogen standard not only protects employees and patients from injury and exposure to disease, but protects employers from lawsuits. If you'd like to learn more about preventing bloodborne pathogen transmission, reach out to eTactics. And you already made it this far into the video, so you might as well like it, share it, and comment below.